Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to partition the residual sum of squares into two pieces called the pure error and the lack of fit. And then we'll, in the next video we'll de develop a test based on that lack of fit sum of squares. So as a reminder, the setting we're in is y equals x beta plus epsilon. And beta is a k plus 1 vector of unknown parameters. And I want to give like a brief illustration in simple linear regression setting and then kind of expand it to the multiple linear regression. Let's assume at each xi value we have ni y measurements. And call them yi1, yi2, etc. to yi ni. And pictorially it looks like this. Ignore this for a second. So at each xi, so at, at x1, we have N1 measurements. So there would be Y11, Y12, Y13, Y1N. There's N of them, or N1 of them. At X2, we also have N2 measurements. Now, they don't have to be the same. There's N1 here and N2 here. And then we call it Y21, Y22, Y23, all the way to Y2N2. And then for each X, you know, at X, the nth X, we have NM measurements, okay? So since we can, since we, you know, we ha at each X we have unique values, the Ys we're gonna call those, you know, Y, you know, like this. And so if, what if, if we want the mean at a particular I, so at XI, we wanna know the mean of these Y I's, you know, it would, it, we're gonna let, let it represent YI bar. And it's actually, so yi means that we're at the, at the xi, and the j is the index. So we're summing all the y's at, you know, yi. And then we're dividing by how many there are. So that's the mean at that particular xi combination. Now, if we think about this, if the mean of the y's is really close to the fitted value, that means that our model fit the data pretty good. So here, if the mean of these are at the fit, that's pretty good. Like, it, if we if one of the x's, all the data are down here, the mean is going to be much different than the fit, and that's not ideal. So if all these means are equal to the fit for all i, that's ideal. That's perfect. But, well, let's, let me move on. We'll come back to that. So notationally, the y vector, which you know is this one, and then I put a transpose so I can write it as a row, y11, y12, all the way to y1n1. So the, all those represent the y's here. And then the same fate for two, y21, y22, all the way to y2n2. That are these. And then the same way for the nth x then what we do is we put those in a vector and just call it y1. So this is a uh, n1 by 1 vector and it contains all the data that's here. And y2 and then ym. So this is how we're going to represent our y data like this. Now the fitted data, we, we usually just represent it by y hat. So this is called the fit, the, the least squares equation. And this is a vector, an n1 by 1 vector of fitted values, okay? But in our new notation, what's it going to look like, okay? So normally we'd call it y1 hat, y2 hat, you know, etc. And it's, and it's represented by x times beta, right? But, right, so it would be x times beta hat would be the fit. Okay, but this X, they have repeats. So the first N1 rows are all the same, right? That's, that would correspond to something like this. Every value is the same. So every row is the same. So that means the column, you know, the first column of ones, the second column is all the same, third column is all the same. And, that goes, and then X2 represents this grouping. So all these x2 values are the same all the way. But this 
as a whole represents X, our design matrix. Now this is an N1 by K plus 1 vector. So when you take the first row times it, you get a value, second row, they're all going to be the same, but we, it can be, it's this. And the X2 would be this all the way to XM. Now if we think about this, so this is an N1 by 1 matrix, or by K plus 1 matrix. This first row times this, we get a value. The second row times this, we get a value. It's the same, right? Because this doesn't change and each row is the same. So it's it. So it's actually Y1, we're going to call it Y1 hat because they're all the same value. So this is a scalar. And then this is a vector of ones with dimension in one by one, right? Every, every value is the same. Same here. Every value here, we're just going to call y2 hat, right? And this is a vector of ones of n2 by one vector of one. So when that multiplies in, we get constants and then the same one. So in, you know, where say yi is a vector and n i by one vector of ones. So these are all constant, all constant, different values, right? Corresponding to this, you know, y1 is different than y2, which is different than ym. Now let's first uh, partition this using scalar notation. So here, the sum of squares residuals, in the past, we've left, represented it like this. So it's the data fluctuating from the fitted value. When we go from 1 to n. But there's a natural grouping here that um, if we look at, at no, this notation, so when i equals 1, then it's kind of like being here at this value, then we're going to sum all the y, right, and subtract the fit. You know, so that's that first group. And then when y, when i is 2, it's, it's like we're moving to this value, and then we're going to sum all those. So it's y2, 1, y2, 3, y2, you know, we're summing over those. And we do that for all m points, okay? So you may have to pause the video to make sure this sum is this sum, and it is. Now, um, we're going to add 0 to this. We're going to add yi bar and subtract yi bar in this sum, okay? Now, next, we want to multiply it out. So we're going to group them. This times this. This time, you know, this group, and then this times that, and that times that. And that's what the next page is going to do. So we have the double sum. So that's that first group multiplied together, the second group. And then it's that times this, this times this, and we get this. And since they're uh, scalars, you know, the, we can rearrange them, and that's why we get two of them. Now, this right here is the data fluctuating around its mean at each um, at each i. And we call this the pure sum of squares pure air. Pure air. Now this one, there's no j index, right? So we're just adding the same value n i times. So it's really going to be n i times this. And, you know, that's the sum. And then over here, there is no j in this so we can take it out of that, you know, this J summation, and we get this. And then if we look at this sum right here, it's actually zero. The sum of the YIJ minus YI, that ends up being zero. And I'll let you do that on your own. Um, well, then this right here is what we call the sum of the squares lack of fit. This is the sum of squares pure air. So we've partitioned the res sum of squares residual into these two sums of squares. Now this lack of fit, remember we were saying that when the yi bar equals yi fit, this is going to be really close to zero. So this sum is going to be really close to zero. So the lack of fit is going to be really close to zero. Right? And the, the pure air is going to dominate this, this partition and it's going, to, you know, and it's equal to the sum of squares residual. But if the y, if the mean is not close to the fit, then this is going to be a big number, which is indicative that hey, our model really wasn't the correct model. 
And this sum of squares lack of fit is going to be big compared to the pure air. And anyway, in the next video, we're going to develop a test to see if this gets too big, meaning there's a lack of fit or not a lack of fit. Okay, But I want to de de uh, derive this in matrix notation for mainly two reasons. It's going to end up in our distributional properties of these. It's going to make it way easier. And also, learning about like this block diagonal that I'm going to introduce and, and the way that it works is really going to help when we jump into design of experiments because those design matrices and the projection matrices associated with them can be sort of crazy. And I think this is going to help train our brain into, into thinking like that. So let's let Ji be this matrix here. So where Yi is a vector of ones, but it has a length of Ni. So J1, this is going to be an N1 by 1 vector. And when you do this multiplication, you end up with an Ni by Ni matrix of all 1 over Ni. It's a, it's a it's constant matrix. It's symmetric. Uh, ends up being idempotent. Then we want to introduce J star. And it's going to be block diagonal with J1, J2, all the way to Jm down its diagonal. So each one of these is a Ni by Ni matrix. But the whole matrix is N by N. It's a N by N matrix because when you add up all those, we get N observations, which is you know an N by N matrix. Okay. So now let's look at this. So J star is this. So it this it's a block diagonal with these matrices, and the rest is zero. And we want to pre-multiply y. So this is a vector of you know of y1, y2, y3, you know, all the way to yn. Or, but remember, this is also, um, yeah, so let's do that. So now when we think about this, there's n1, this is n1 by n1, the rest are zeros. So when we multiply that, we're only grabbing the first n1 y values. And we're adding them up and dividing by N1. That's what this first row does. But the second row is the same. So we get the same value. The third row, the, all the way to the N1th row, we're adding and dividing by N minus 1. So we get Y1 bar. That's what we were calling Y1 bar. But it's, it's con so this is a constant vector, and every element is Y1 bar. And, and we do the same here. So this one here grabs... You know, it's zero here, zero here. So it's only grabbing the next N2 values. Add them and divide them by N minus 2, right? So we get, a, and, and each row is the same. So each value is going to be the same. So this is going to be Y2 bar, you know, and it's constant for N2 times and all the way to, to here. Um, so next, let another property is Ji Xi is actually to Xi. So remember this Xi, I'm going to flash it back here, is created because every row is the same here. Every row is the same in this group, and every row is the same in this group. So when we multiply this out, you know, every, every col column, you know, the first column is all one. So when we take we add them up and divide by n minus you know i. It's it's constant. You get that same value back in that upper left, and every column is the same here. So when you multiply, you get the mean of that column, which is it's constant, so it's the same. So when you do this multiplication, you get xi back because every row is the same, and and the. You know the first column has the same value in every uh, in every position. Second column, every you know, every element's the same. That's why we get this. So based upon the way we define Ji, Ji times Ji, so that's Ji, Ji. This is identity matrix. We get this, which is Ji. So it's idempotent. It's a symmetry. And actually, that point right there tells you that Ji is a perpendicular projection matrix. So 
now J star was block diagonal and then because of this you can do J star J star and get J star back and it's symmetric and item potent so it's a perpendicular projection matrix but now based upon this and this, this right here J star X remember X can be divided into these little X size and J star is block diagonal so in this multiplication you get X back so this implies that J star H, and if we multiply what H is, it's the hat matrix, but J star X is X, so we get the hat matrix back. Now the last half page in this derivation, the sum of squares residual, of course, is this. And we can quickly go from vector multiplication to this. So, so this is the Y vector, this is the fitted value, and, and this is that. So, but the hat matrix is HY, right? That's why they call it the hat matrix. You pre-multiply Y by H and it puts a hat on Y. So these are equal. Now we're going to add zero and add zero. So we're going to add and subtract the same quantity. Add and subtract the same quantity. Now when we multiply this out, we're going to this group times this group this group times this group and then that times this and this times this and we're going to get the following so the f the first group we get this the second group we get this and then this times this and this times this but they're but they're uh, scalar so you can take the transpose and get the same thing that's where this two comes out front and then that, that's this product now let's examine just this right here for a second. So if we write factor out a Y and then take the transpose in, we get this. And same way here, we write, write factor out a Y and then we get what's left over is J star H. Now let's multiply this piece to, together so we get I times J star, J star, I times H, J times J, J star times H, we get this. But J star, J star is J, so J minus J is zero. And here, this is H minus H, which is zero. So this cross product goes away. And we're left with this. So we write factor out a Y and then transpose it in. Write factor out a Y. Here we do the same. Write factor out a Y and transpose it in. Write factor out a Y we get this now each of these are symmetric so when you take the transpose in it you get it back and then when you multiply these together they're item potent so you get that same matrix same here well this is what we're calling sum of squares pure air and this is sum of squares lack of fit and this right here identity think of it as like y and then when we multiplied y times j, we got those little constant vectors of the mean. So it's the data minus the mean. That's what, really what this represents. And then this is the mean minus the fitted value once you take all those in. And that's the sum of squares lack of fit. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. It's getting a little long. Now, we're interested in how big this sum of squares lack of fit is. And we're going to develop a test based upon to see if this lack of fit is too big or not. And that's the next video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.